Nicholas Rizzo may not be a household name, but this long-serving Cosmonauts member did something that many of the more illustrious names in mob history, such as Charlie Luciano, John Gotti, or even Carla Gambino, failed to do. Nicholas Rizzo managed to go throughout his criminal career without a single arrest. Well, right up until the age of 83. Yet despite this impressive record, Rizzo's personal life was blighted by unimaginable tragedy. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at Colombo soldier Nicholas Rizzo, a man whose criminal career didn't result in a single arrest until he was 83 years of age. Born in 1927, the young Rizzo would serve in the latter stages of World War II, joining the Navy and attaining the rank of US Seaman First Class. Around the time that Rizzo was returning from the war, the crime family that he would eventually be joining was run by original commission member Joe Profacci. It is said that Nicholas Rizzo is a bricklayer by trade and he managed to navigate his fledgling criminal career throughout the turbulent times of the profacci gallo conflict. It appears that Rizzo predominantly stuck with the traditional mob rackets of loan sharking and extortion, in which he was very successful. Rizzo put his criminal proceeds to good use by investing in legitimate ventures and over the years he owned a gas station, a used car lot, a pizza parlour and in accordance with his bricklaying roots Rizzo also owned a general contractors business. His legitimate and illegal endeavours helped Nicholas Rizzo become a multi-millionaire. It is said that he was particularly frugal with his money and according to mob expert Jerry Capisi one gangland source told him Nicky has always been a low-key, unassuming, under-the-radar guy. He was never the most sophisticated street guy, but he made a lot of money as a loan shark, and he probably still has the first dollar he ever stole. Nicholas Rizzo would marry a woman called Vivian, and the pair would have three children, Charles, Nicholas and Anna. But more on that later. In the 1970s, it is said that the Colombo mobster ran a social club on New Utrecht Avenue, Brooklyn, along with Bonanno family soldier, John, Johnny Green, Faraci. Faraci, who died in 2011 at the age of 88, was another mobster who didn't believe in slowing down due to old age. In 2002, the then 79-year-old Faraci, who had fought in World War II's Battle of Normandy, was being sentenced for conspiracy to bribe a Union officer. On handing down his punishment, Justice Leo Glasser said, I suggest at your age, you ought to be thinking about getting out of that life worrying about who's coming knocking on your door putting handcuffs on you. Anyway, back in the 1970s, John Faraci asked his good friend Nicholas Rizzo for a favour. This particular favour was on behalf of the unofficial power of the Bonanno crime family, Carmine Galante. Galante needed his recently emigrated Sicilian soldiers, Boldo Amato and Cesare Bonventure, put into legitimate employment and Faraci asked Nicholas Rizzo if he would hire the pair as labourers with his construction business. A favour that Nicholas Rizzo was happy to oblige. By the late 1970s, Nicholas Rizzo was formally inducted into the Colombo crime family. Rizzo was in the crew of Carmine Persico's cousin and future acting boss of the family, Andrew Mush Russo. A captain at the time, other members of Russo's crew along with Rizzo included John, Junior Lollipops Karna, John Minerva, Russo's son Joseph, and also future street boss Thomas Tomyshot Gielli. The first of Rizzo's many personal tragedies occurred in 1979. On March the 28th at 2.20am, Nicky Rizzo's 22-year-old son Nicholas was gunned down by a hail of bullets as he stood in the window of his parents' house. Two gunmen stood on the front lawn and blasted away at Rizzo's middle child. Apparently they then drove off but quickly returned and fired several more shots into the incapacitated victim. In Bay Ridge earlier that night at Pastel's Disco, allegedly the domain of Genovese mobster Alfonso Ali Shades Malangone, Rizzo's son became involved in a violent incident with a woman who allegedly rejected his advances. A source told journalist Jerry Capisi, The kid had a few drinks and got a little stupid. He tried to pick up some girl and when she told him to get lost, he smashed her in the face with an ashtray and left. 
Later that night, a car pulled up outside the Rizzo residence. Two gunmen honked on the horn of the vehicle until the 22-year-old Rizzo came to the front window. And then they opened fire. Nicholas Rizzo's son had been a troubled young man. Ever since he'd been playing baseball as a teenager with some friends and a bat slipped out of someone's hand and hit the young Rizzo in the head. Nicholas Rizzo's attorney, Joseph Muir Jr. said he had a blood clot and follow-up surgeries but never fully recovered from the head trauma. Following his son's murder, sources are divided as to whether the feared Colombo gangster Nicky Rizzo achieved vengeance for his son's killing. According to Capisi, one source said he did, whereas another denied it. Nicholas Rizzo's personal losses didn't stop there. In 1982, his eldest son, Charles, named after his grandfather in the Sicilian tradition, died after falling six flights down an air shaft on a construction site. And then, in 1990, his daughter Anna died allegedly of a drug overdose. Nicholas Rizzo had suffered every parent's worst nightmare and in the space of just 11 years had lost all three of his children. In the late 80s and early 90s, when the Third Colombo War broke out between Vic Arena and Carmine Persico, Nicholas Rizzo sided with Little Vic, but apparently did not get involved in any of the shooting. Throughout the 1990s, Rizzo continued under the radar, quietly adding more and more money to his growing fortune. In 1999, he allegedly had his associates blow out the windows of the vehicles owned by a rival car dealer in order to extract protection money. It wasn't until January 2011 that the then 83-year-old Nicholas Rizzo was arrested by the authorities for the very first time. The FBI seized over $400,000 in cash along with loan sharking records from Rizzo's house and also a safety deposit box. Nicholas Rizzo was just one of 127 mobsters that the Attorney General announced had been arrested in a massive takedown of predominantly Colombo members and associates. In 2013, Nicholas Rizzo pled guilty to loan sharking and his lawyer asked for leniency as this was the then 86-year-old's first arrest. The prosecution pushed for two years, but Judge Matsumoto sentenced the aging mobster to six months in a medical facility. Rizzo also had to pay $600,000 as part of the plea. Interestingly, Rizzo was handed a humanitarian reprieve and spared serving any of his six-month sentence. However, in October 2013, just a week after being awarded this reprieve, he was spotted in an illegal gambling club in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. This club was controlled by Banano acting boss Vincent Vinny TV Badalamenti. Nicholas Rizzo quickly had his bail revoked. It seems like nothing would stop this aging mobster from operating. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.